Anyway, that's the basis of what we're talking about, people. Now, here's the periodic table. Now, this is the Mendeleev periodic table, the standard chemistry periodic table. And basically what it says is over here, these nuclei are very stable. And what it says over here is these nuclei are very stable. What they first found is starting here with actinium, number 89, then it goes 90, 91, 92, 93, 94. These are all the heavy elements called the actinide group, named after actinium. These are the heavy ones. And these nuclear physicists found that every one of these elements, actinium, thorium, protractium, uranium, neptunium, plutonium, and americinium, every one of these would just deform and blow apart if they were monoatomic. They say, well, why didn't they discover this sooner? Well, nobody ever looked at it that well before. They found out they just come apart. They actually become deformed just like their radioactive isotope come apart. Well, most of these are radioactive isotopes. So you say, well, it's no big deal then, Dave. They're just coming apart, but this is what we'd expect. It's no big deal. But no sooner did they find that the actinide group here would do it, all these heavy elements, then they began to look at the lanthanide group, which is number 57. And they found that 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 60, if you move them up and stick them in the periodic table, they should go right here. Okay, that's where they should be. But they took them out, and they moved them down here, and then they shoved the next row up. So it's kind of missing out of the periodic table, because they're called the rare earths. And they say, you're never going to find these that much. You don't have to worry. That's why you don't need to worry about this. They're just the rare earths. Well, they're not that rare. They found out since then they're not that rare. But anyway... When they began to look at this group of elements, they found that when they began with the lanthanide group, the beginning here was 62, samarium, europium, gadolinium, terbium, and dysprosium. So 62 through 66, this group right here all would do this. They literally deform and blow themselves apart, all on their own or they're capable of blowing themselves apart, but they deform. And they say, well, golly, 62 through 66, those are not that heavy an element. They're right here in the middle of the periodic table, and they blow apart. And so they said, gee, if this will do it, and it's based on the harmonic sequence in the nucleus, that over here the nucleus are, are just starting to fill their outer orbitals, and here they're just completing filling their, their outer orbitals, but it's these elements right here in the center of the periodic table where the problem is. Because they have half-filled or half-empty nuclear orbitals. So they're the most unfilled or the most out of balance that any system could be. It's like having a big glob of mud on one of the tires in your car. It just goes home, a womp, a womp, as you try to drive it down the road. You gotta go out and wash that mud off, because it'll just deform itself. It'll shake the tire off your car. Anyway. If you take this group, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, and you move it up and you stick it in the periodic table right here where it belongs, it goes 58, 59, 60, 61, 62. So here's where 62 should be, 63, 64, 65, and 66. So they said, well, gee, if these elements do that, then these elements here, ruthenium, rhodium, palladium, silver, and cadmium, and osmium, iridium, platinum, gold, and mercury should also do the same thing. That's the thinking. If the rare earths do it, then the ones that really blow and really blow should also do the same thing. That's the theory. So let's go to the next paper. Now remember, if this is boring, this is the science. <laughs> Okay, this is 1989, the American Physical Society. This is volume 39, number three, Physical Review C, March 1989. Possible discontinuity in octopole behavior in the platinum through mercury region. Now that coincidentally is the platinum gold in mercury. It's the platinum through mercury. Why they just don't use the word gold, I still haven't figured out. But Anyway, this is a theory put out by the Department of Nuclear Physics Research School of Physical Sciences, Australian National University. It was actually received October 88, published in March of 89. What they, this is, this is a theory about the way the protons and neutrons interact with each other. It's real complex physics. We don't understand it. We don't care to understand it. There may be a few physicists, 
an instant understanding, far over my head. But they do say a few things that are very important. It says, apart from the well-deformed rare earth and heavy aconite nuclei, which is what I just told you, the aconite nuclei and the well-deformed rare earths, okay, which is confirming what I just told you, which would not be expected to agree with this theory, to conform to this parameterization, they found that nuclei in the platinum region, the proton number 78 through 82 and neutron number 108 to 126 were also anomalous. In other words, they don't work either. They become deformed. But right here is the key sentence. A discontinuity of this magnitude is not observed in any other part of the periodic table. In other words, this is as bad as it gets. Platinum, gold, and mercury. As bad as it gets. People ask me, well, how deformed is it? Gold just happens to be 2.6 to 1 deformation. That's the number, 2.6 to 1. You can figure out what the symbolism of that is and what it means. Anyway, let's go to the next one. Physical Review C, Volume 37, Number 2, February 1988. Now, this is the one exception. I filed my patent, or refile was in March of 88 when they actually recorded the date. This is one month earlier. All my other references are after my patent. This one's one month before. Collected a single particle structure in rhodium 103. People, you don't know this, but most of you don't, but rhodium-103 is the only stable isotope of rhodium. It's just like gold. It only has one stable isotope. But they're talking about high spin states, and that rhodium is a soft nucleus and exhibits shape coexistence. In other words, it's not stable. It just deforms like putty. What they're talking about is, the, is where they find this, how many nuclei, and the onset of deformation when neutrons are equal to 60, and then the most important sentence is here. In part, this is reflected in the level structure of proton numbers equal to or greater than 42, neutron numbers equal or greater than 56, nuclei such as ruthenium, rhodium, palladium, and silver isotopes, which just happen to be the elements in my, my patent application. All right, let's go to the next one. Physical Review C, Volume 38, Number 2, August 88, Os Structure of Osmium and Platinum Isotopes. And what they're talking about here is a change in shape, that the shapes went from prolate to the asymmetric parameter, and they go to the oblate with the, then they're talking about the frequency number and the bands. Anyway, this is all about the change in shape of the nucleus and how deformed they become and what shape they take. It's real interesting physics. It's not very good reading, so we're not going to read any further than this. For physicists who want to read it, that's the confirmation it deforms badly. But this one now is real specific, people. Physical Review C, Volume 38, Number 2, August 1988, from Rapid Communication. Super deformation in Palladium 104 and 105. It's a neat thing. Whenever you discover something, you get to name it. You get to put a name on it, anything you like. So now i got super conductivity. Now they're talking about super deformed. Okay, that's what they're talking about. This is the Nuclear Science Division, Lawrence Berkeley Laboratories, Berkeley, California. This is United States Government National Laboratories. If this isn't good enough for you, no credentials will be. What they're saying here, of special interest are those shapes known as superdeformed, FD, where the nucleus acquires a very elongated shape that can be approximately represented by an ellipsoid, where the ratio of the long to short axis is considerably larger than that of a normal deformation of 1.3 to 1. In other words, the normal deformation is about 1.3, just slightly egg-shaped. But one can expect the existence of favorable shell gaps that appear regularly as a function of deformation and nucleon number. And anyway, they correspond to ratios of the length of the axis of about 2 to 1. Okay, so what they're saying is the word superdeformed actually is the word they give to it when it's twice as long as it is wide, 2 to 1. And when it becomes two to one, it spin flips to the high spin state. Twice as long as it's wide, it spin flips to the high spin state. And then they're talking about the discovery of it, 15 years. First discovery had to wait 15 years until they found that it was in the actinide group and the rare earth. And they're talking about single particle configuration, pairing correlations, or population decay mechanisms. Anyway, nuclei at high spin and large deformation. 